Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. All right, I'm in the mood to work with a color palette today, and I'm going to work with color. I just looked through the cards today instead of doing a blind pull. I, sometimes if I'm a little bit tired, the extra mile, pulling a blank card and being like, okay, let's go with a blind pull. I don't know, it just seems like too much effort. <laughs> and yet I still want to come up here and create as many days as possible, whether I'm, you know, a little bit tired or whether I'm hopped up on sugar. <laughs> and so on the days where I'm like not feeling the extra mile, I'm thinking, okay, let's pull a color palette that we at least find beautiful or inspiring or interesting. And today, that was this one for me. So I'm going to work in Color Card 360 because it was pretty. This is out of Color Cube Volume 2 by Sarah Renee Clark. And I linked these for you in the description below so that you don't even have to go hunting for stuff. I'll link all the products and everything under there. I'm going to work on a piece of arches today because that's what I have sitting at my table that I pulled out last week and I generally just work my way through a pad and then go get a different pad of paper to work on. So that's what you see a lot of times on these videos is me just working my way through the pad that's beside my desk. And I get it. Not everybody wants to work on the most expensive papers. So these type projects, the Canon XL paper, which is a student grade paper, but it's the one that I usually grab if I'm looking to do some work like this, but maybe not use the most expensive papers. But now I'm all about experimenting with all the papers and I buy it all when it's on sale and I put it in my closet. And then by the time I get to that pad of paper, I've completely forgot how much it cost. And I'm no longer hampered by the cost of the paper when I go to create. And the paints really do react differently on cotton papers versus cellulose papers. And so I want to see, you know, those differences. And I want to be able to work on the paper without, you know, worrying about messing it up because it's just paper. It's just paint. My favorite little phrase is be brave. <laughs> I get it. We don't want to waste our precious supplies, but I would like to say that the only way that you're actually wasting your stuff is by not using it because when you pull out a tube of paint and you discover it's dry, you can legit say you wasted that which I have done, especially with oil paints, because I go back and forth playing with oil paints and not playing with oil paints. <laughs> and I have definitely let some of those dry all the way till they're just no good at all. Okay, so I want to kind of play with these new. I showed these in the last art haul, these Graphitent XL blocks. I like them because they're right in there with like the sunset kind of mood and these three colors right down here at the end or even these four go from like purple, kind of some reddish purplies and a brown. Those fit right into our little color palette here. And then I'm kind of thinking if I start with those, maybe on top of that, I can do some mark making and some other things in this lighter shades here. Um, really, this is kind of right here too. So it just inspired me for using some colors to go down as a base and then maybe even pull some pastel work on top of that or some stencil work. I've got some of these Mungo uh, pastels that I got recently. Um, M-U-N-G-Y-O. This is a 72 colors and what I liked about it was these 72 colors were like half the price of my Karen Dash colors for which was only 24 colors versus 72 colors. And I think I paid more for this than I paid for all of these. And I used these on one of the projects uh, last week and I'm like, oh, I love these and there's a lot of colors. And then I was looking on Amazon and I think this comes in like a hundreds of colors set. And I'm like, well, shoot, why didn't I get that set? <laughs> And now if I buy that set, I'll be duplicating a lot of those colors. I really am like the most ridiculous person. Let's look, let's start with a fan brush and see if we can just pick up color like a watercolor. 
Um, yeah, I'm like the, oh, totally. Look at that. We totally did it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like ridiculous when it comes to the art supplies. I want all the colors. And yet when I go to create, I do think the best way to create is by simplifying your color palettes and what you're using and what you're doing. So just because you can't have all the colors doesn't mean you should be using all the colors. Let's put some marks in here with this fan brush. Everybody needs a fan brush. And I'm just playing. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just thinking, what interesting thing have I not done before? Play with your supplies. This is your moment to experiment, to play, to figure out how these things work. To discover maybe the fan brush is like your new favorite tool because you can get cool marks I don't know so that's what I use all these projects for to play and discover make messes experiment somebody wanted me to use my dagger brush so this is a great big dagger brush it's a 3 8 inch Princeton Neptune um, these are good for painting in my mind yummy abstracts but what could we do with the dagger brush we could kind of come through and pull color through gotta have a lot more water here on this one and these are like super light because at the moment i'm using them as a watercolor here um, and just picking up a little bit of color but we're gonna change that up in a bit let's go ahead and put that one down let's pick up this whatever this is this is number five in this set and now I'm kind of thinking let's add some marks and play because I almost want to be like let's paint today without using paint how can we paint without paint we can use water soluble dry things like this and just see like what can we get and then we can be like, look, no paint at all in this piece today. Ooh. I like these kind of weirdo scribbly lines. Might not be your thing. And if it's not your thing, don't do it. I love them. Okay, so that was pretty fun. Let's see if I can come back in with some of this really deep. It's like a deep purple aubergine, something nice and pretty and dark. Now we can draw on here and then if we're like oh i love that can we add some water to that well yes yes we can i'm glad you asked so we can draw on there and then smush it around with a little bit of water and then you can have some interesting marks within what you did so that's super fun we could do that with that red scribble too like we could come back over here kind of activate that a little bit get a little bit more going if we wanted all right so I'm loving the purple I could do like real heavy purple and then we could come back with our brush and really scrub that in the only thing about putting it on this thing so let me pull back out my aquarelle palette so this is the palette aquarelle by Karen Dash what I like about these is they're specifically made for they were made for the neo color two pastels but you can use this with anything so watch this so this stuff you can just draw on here with your chalky medium now we can pick up all the color with our brush and then we can paint with it like it was a watercolor without it leaving the line or the mark on the paper how cool is that and let's say you wanted to get crazy now we can mix colors also you don't have to use just one color the way it is if you want to experiment and say well what would it be if i mix the two now we know we can mix them how fun is that how fun is that so this thing feels like a kitchen cutting board just saying <laughs> but um it is really cool and i'm glad i have it because i need to pull it out more i've had it for a long time and it kind of lives over here on my shelf here behind uh where i'm sitting if you've seen my little studio thing you know i've got this little white shelf right here so i can kind of grab everything that's my most popular 
most popular, my most favorite. The things I need to grab, like the whole time I'm filming or creating, they're right there at my, where I can just grab it. All these fun things on these shelves. And then I overstack the shelves and then I drop stuff. <laughs> so far I'm liking this one the best. Um, it's all about experimenting. So I do have, could let this dry some and then I could come back with some oil pastels or some of these little woodies. I like these woodies. Um, that could be fun. Woodies also are water soluble. Um, is there really a color in here? Maybe this purple kind of fits in our color palette. Just kind of looking at it over to the side there. These are really kind of bright. So I think I might, might go with the oil pastels because I have way more colors to pick from. And I'm just kind of letting this dry as I'm talking. But yeah, I have more oil pastel colors to pick from. So I really can kind of compare the card to the colors and say, okay, are any of these the right shade? So this one is the right shade of yellow. Let's go ahead and pull that out. That one's really pretty. Actually, this one's closer. So I've got like, a, kind of got these colors that I'm looking at. I might have to go into one of the other ones. Let's see, because I kind of want, I want this like pretty purpley shade, but I'm not really finding it. Okay, so that might be the colors that we go with. So I've got these and I've got some paint pens over here because really the second goal here was to paint without using paint. <laughs> So let's just, let's just do something crazy. You know, I'm talking, so I don't think it's hard. So look how crazy that was just to be like, bam, we got some big circles. That was kind of crazy. I agree. I'm kind of like hot mess. And at the same time, I'm like, huh, I kind of like that. So now I'm like, okay, let's do it over here. <laughs> And then I could visit this color palette again on a different day with the intention of using paints. I feel like you're a little more limited when you're painting without paint. And at the same time, huh, really weirdly kind of like this. And at the same time, it forces you to be even more creative because you're like, okay, I can't go back to the old standby. So how can I accomplish whatever it is um, I'm trying to do? Let's put this as a... Another little mark in here. How can you accomplish these things? Thinking outside your box and limiting yourself and what you're allowing yourself to pull out and use. This yellow is crazy. And at the same time, I kind of dig it. Now, usually I go for pretty art, but I almost feel like this could be right there in that ugly art movement and you might be like that's the most artsy thing you ever made <laughs> maybe not but i'm just kind of playing here and just bringing you along and letting you kind of giggle and laugh with me as we're going what were you thinking what a hot mess all right i'm loving that weirdly enough now let's put this color in here. Oh, super fun, actually. <laughs> I feel like in my mind there wasn't pretty art today. And sometimes you just got to stop and come back on another day. Let's see, so maybe we want some shape in here. Don't always just go for the same thing you always go for. Try some different things. This is like a little, little cross mark or like a little crossy kind of shape. And just see what some different marks might do in a different material that you don't normally use. How fun is that? Super fun. If you, can, if you didn't realize, super fun. Let's do that one over here. <laughs> 
And yes, I do spray these with the oil pastel fixative when I'm using these little oil pastels. Somebody else asked me, how do you know what to do if you use oil pastel and soft pastel? You need to think logically about what is going on each layer and layer those in a way. So I kind of feel like maybe this, is that really in there? I really want a dark, dark. Ooh, let's go for this one. No, it's not grayed down enough. So you really need to think logically about, let's do this one. This is the Karen Dash, it's a purple one. About what is going on each layer. So with oil pastels, can I put anything on top of the oil pastel? No, that really needs to be, I mean, maybe you could, but I'm saying, saying no. That really needs to be the top layer. So if you know that this is the top layer, now what, that needs to be last. And so that spray needs to be last, the oil spray. So now what can you put under that? Well, basically everything. So I'm thinking that the first layer could be some type of watercolor layer. And then on top of that, you could put some type of acrylic because you can't put watercolor really on top of acrylic and it show up and work correctly. So watercolor would be like the first layer in mixed media. And then your acrylic things could go on top of that. And then on top of that, you could do pastels soft pastels and then you know spray that with a soft pastel spray and then on top of that if you need oil pastels you could come back and spray with an oil pastel and then I feel like at that point you've probably got everything in the right order so just logically think like what can I put on top of whatever art material I've just put down and if you're putting oil pastel down you kind of got to think this probably needs to be what's on top because you can't really put stuff on top of it. Like acrylic paint, you can't paint on top of oil pastels. You can't really do watercolor or other mediums on top of it. You're just going to dig through it. So in my mind, logically, the oil pastel is the top layer. And keep in mind, no matter what you create, you always can cut it up. Don't get hung up on, didn't go the direction I wanted it to today. I don't like where this went today. I don't like what I did today, blah, blah, blah. Because some of my very favorite cutout pieces that are in my little uh, art prompt jar are my very favorite pieces of art. And they were terrible when I started. So I don't even worry about where I'm going. What if we put some gold on top of this? <laughs> I've got these the gold and the fine liners and I've got the paste we could put paste on this what if let's just do this all right so I got a little piece of paper here I like to just kind of there we go just get it started I like using these kind of on their side and I'm just gonna whoa, do some craziness over here because I can <laughs> We could even, I have silver too, but I don't feel like silver is really in there. And you know, these fine liners are so cool. You could put ink, any color in these. It doesn't have to be a metallic or a gold or a silver, um, but you could very easily put any color in these fine liners. And I find it works best if you use them almost on their side, makes the ink much more controllable and then it's got a little needle that just goes right down in there and keeps it from getting clogged and that was the fine tip on that and now i'm kind of looking at these thinking all right are we done do we need more did i get enough of any particular color i mean i put those oils and those silvers on top i mean the gold on top so i don't know that there's really a whole lot more i can do on top of these so crazy let's peel the tape and take a look at it and just see what what do we even have and we can maybe cut these apart and just judge these could be cool birthday cards if nothing else you know I do like having doing these and being like okay some of these I'm gonna cut up some of these 
are going to end up different than I thought. This is way different than I intended, actually. So I can kind of be like, okay, I'm a little off today on my painting. <laughs> and give yourself some grace. <laughs> and then we can always cut these up into little hearts. Um, I'm actually liking two of these so far. Maybe three. These are totally crazy. Let's get... Okay, this, the gold is still wet, but I want to cut these up so I can look at them. So, let's just look. Hang on. All right, let's just see what we got. Kind of feeling like they can go this way. This is very much like my inner four-year-old came out. Um... But I do actually am kind of loving these two. And can you see that as like a fun birthday card or a fun thing to send to somebody? I'm actually loving this one because I like how the gold kind of swooped in. And this is probably my least favorite for today. But let me dry this gold and then I'll cut these up. All right, these were dry now. And I went ahead and cut them with my cutter. And I like the shine on there. And I got to tell you, uh, some of these I've doubted the whole time I've painted and I've thought, oh, you might not even see this one. I even say that in a lot of the little videos and I've actually never not posted one of these that I've done and I'm going to post this one too. But this is probably my least favorite thing I've painted using my color cards. I hit the colors. That's not the problem. I, I think I would and I hit the challenge of painting without using paint. But it's way outside of what I normally like to paint. And so even though I like these two overall, I don't like the style that I came up with today. And I'll probably revisit this color palette with paints and watercolors and pile on top of that and like it better than what I did today. But isn't that interesting? Some days are not going to be your very favorite. And I might even... <laughs> pull out my heart punch <laughs> and just look and see would I like this better cut up into <laughs> yes I would <laughs> let's just do it oh my gosh okay so this is going to save the day right here <laughs> oh my gosh you gotta always have a little good a little bit of a sense of humor about it and then think well what could I do so that I did like this better and for me look at that oh <gasps> look at that <laughs> totally and i got gold on me somehow i don't know what i've touched maybe it wasn't completely dry i thought it was <laughs> oh my goodness okay so that <laughs> tell me that didn't just save the day because punched out into little shapes they're actually kind of amazing <laughs> oh i really like that one too Let's cut that a little bit see if there's enough to make a heart. There might not be. I think, they, think I've got a tiny bit of gold still wet on these. That's okay, though. Oh, yeah. See right there. <laughs> okay, so you can even save a bad paint day by cutting out some hearts. <laughs> Those are like totally awesome. And they are more elevated than my five-year-old paint self did today so yeah so I'm, I'm gonna put this one out there even though this is definitely my least favorite thing I've ever painted this year I think but this saved it I should just make cut hearts out of all of these and then these could be put on cards like these could be a really pretty card I've seen a couple people in my groups making little cards out of these shapes and you can see how something like that would be really lovely to get you could also put a little business information and include these in packaging for art that you sell. You could also include pretty little hearts in a card that you're sending to somebody as a fun little handmade element in your cards. You could also create your own little art prompt set and I've got art prompt videos check out that playlist and I give you lots of fun things that you can write on the back of these and when you get stuck making a piece of art look how pretty that one was and it was just as ugly when I had a big one um, when you get stuck you can have little prompts that prompt you on the next step like add some black for contrast use an art product you've never used before and then, you know, once you see some of these, add some paint splatter. You'll get inspired to add some of your own prompts to pull. And if you put it in a pretty little 
decorative dessert dish. Got these at the antique market for like five bucks. Um, it'll make it a really fun item to keep in your art room and to add to when you have a piece of art that's not your favorite and you can add to it as you're cutting pieces out. So I hope you had fun painting today. I'd love to know if this is your painting colors and style. I did have fun painting today even if I did not love love what I made. It's always good to just come up, get creative. Now I know some things I did not know when I got started like using the blocks just by like scrubbing a little color off of it and painting maybe lighter than I would have wanted those to be. I would have maybe wanted them darker like the solid watercolor kind of look that I'm pretty heavy handy at create heavy handed at creating with my Kuretake watercolors but all in all still a fun day. I like the extra gold element on these because it shines and it's really pretty and if I go back and cut these out that'll be a pretty element on my hearts. Can't wait to see what you're creating and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.